media. As consumers, we are bombarded by it at every turn like the Incredible Hulk being bombarded by gamma rays. But what makes some media endure, while others are banished to the forgotten black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again? Who or what decides this? Hetero life mate Steve and Yehel want to know, and they want to know now. This is Obscurity Now. now, now, now. And what's up, Obscurians? It's time for another episode of Obscurity Now, the show that takes a look at weird and almost forgotten pieces of media that we decide that they should be remembered for all of human history or tossed into the black void of obscurity, never to be heard from again. My name is Steve. I'm one of the hosts. And with me, he's a man who's got too much free time. It's... <laughs> yeah, hell. Uh, how are you? You know, Steve, <laughs> uh, it's not that I'm wasting time because... You don't waste time. Time wastes you. Oh, nicely played. Nicely played. Yes. One of the mi- many quotable lines from uh, Look Well, the, the show that we are going to uh, review today. But, uh, but before we get into it, I, I want to know, uh, what have you been up to since the, uh, the very raucous Reptilian Media uh, Christmas party? Um, <laughs> what I, I mean, nothing. Recover. It took me a few days to recover. Uh <laughs> Really, you didn't see well. I, you didn't get to uh, to the hell levels that I remember from the early two thousands. No, no, but... I, I really, I, I've cut way, way back on my drinking in general. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, <laughs> but I, I really, I was, I would say, delightly belligerent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was drunk, but like not too crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it... but uh, no, the only thing I've been up to, um, you know, had to do like normal holiday crap Mm -hmm. family Um, (laughs) everyone's got one well maybe not everyone fortunately uh but uh, other than that i just last week i was building this like dedicated retro gaming pc with Mm -hmm. this uh operating system called batocera have you ever heard of it i know i have not uh well it's it's like linux based Mm -hmm. uh but anyways the point is that basically you know, you use that instead of like something like Windows, and it's the nice thing. It's like when you turn your computer, it just boots right into it like a console does. Nice. And it's got a really nice interface and a bunch of themes, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, really nice. So I'm pretty excited, pretty jazzed about that, <laughs> and uh, just uh, finishing up uh, getting some of my legitimate, le- very legal backup copies of games I completely own. One hundred percent. That's it. we're all. Above level here on uh, obscurity now. As you know, Steve, I have a full library of every uh, gaming system available, and these are just my legal backup copies of. Of course, we all those do. thousands of games I have, and all of these really hard to find movies. I also own them all on Blu-ray. So I know you do. I've got I, I several copies of uh, what was that Christmas? Uh, hor- uh, Don't open till Christmas. Yes, I have. I have the VHS, the DVD, the Blu-ray copy, and I'm I'm currently working on a mural <laughs> of uh, <laughs> a mural. <laughs> a mural. Yeah, yeah. Or no, actually, what I wanted to say was a diorama. I'm working on a diorama. Ah, there, there you yeah, go. It's the well, you have so many copies, you you can do both. Right, uh, right. It's the scene where. The weird mass face guy is just looking at the naked woman. Yeah, I figured that's the most important scene in that movie. <laughs> and then you can come and look well at it. Huh? See what I did there? Oh, very nice. Very <laughs> you nice. You hated it. You hated um, it. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much all I've uh, been up to. That's of note. Mm, all right. Uh, did you get any, buy yourself any new games or anything? Uh, I didn't really buy myself any new games. I did get myself a Retro Tink 4K. Mm-hmm. It's pretty pricey, which I'm actually going to hook up to uh, that uh, little retro gaming PC. Mm-hmm. It's really supposed to be made for like you know your retro consoles, but uh, I don't know. It's got it's got some. It's pretty expensive, but it's got some really neat uh, FPGA based like slot masks and CRT masks that you really have to see it in person to appreciate. But it really makes like your modern flat screen look exactly like an lcd now like these crappy like scan lines you know that the snes classic kind of <laughs> i feel like this but... is like we this is one of the first things we talked about when i showed up at your house <laughs> it is it is it is <laughs> you're um, really passionate about this thing dude it, it looks insane mm-hmm. like it, it is 
real kind of trippy, like how it just makes your uh, flat, you know, LED or OLED TV, even better if you have one of those, uh, look just like a myriad of um, uh, CRTs. I'm probably going to go with a PVM look for mine, but... A, a cornucopia, if you will. Yeah. And, and, of course, it does, like, perfect upscaling, 4K upscaling. Oh, classic of, of course. I would expect nothing less yeah, uh, from exactly. wrestling with gaming. What, what about you, Steve? Did, did you uh, get any, any new toys, uh, either for the living room, bedroom? <laughs> uh, well, I got a, the ability to make almost whatever toys I want um, in a 3D printer. Um, I don't even know where I'm going to fit it in my tiny office, but, uh, I'm going to find a way to make it work. And I also, I think I already told you that I got, I mean, I don't know, this is either the lamest or coolest thing ever. You, you be the judge, uh, listeners. I, I got a button maker because I want to make my own buttons and sell them at the cons, uh, when I go and attempt to sell my, uh, comic book. So I'll yeah. have my... Which is good because all those cosplayers that lose a button now, they'll be able to just uh, come to your booth and get their buttons replaced. Not those kind of button the, the, buttons. The, the, <laughs> you know. know the guy. Ah, yeah. this guy is over here uh, working shtick. But, uh, yeah, so stay tuned, uh, dear um, Obscurians, because there, there will be some Obscurity Now buttons that will be available to purchase in our store if you so desire. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, I think we've chit-chatted enough. Are you ready to dive head... No, no, no. Are you ready to look well at Look Well, starring Adam West? Yes. All right, let's do this thing. (laughs) Welcome to your feature presentation. All right, so I just, first off, let's uh, say why we're watching this. This was a uh, long-time listener request, if you will, from, uh, he's usually here every <laughs> every week, Creative KB. He's not here right now, but I'm sure he'll show up later. Um, but, uh, man, he's been asking for this for a long, long time. So, Merry Christmas, buddy. Uh, yeah, and how, how dare he not show up? I uh, know, I know. That's like uh, when you're trying to give the star player a trophy and he doesn't show up because he's out. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, what, what a great sports uh, analogy from a great sports fan. <laughs> well, well, you know me. I love, uh, I love like... Uh, sports? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I love the Globetrotters. I, I love when they fight someone because they're going to win every time so I like <laughs> when they fight someone yeah, yeah when they battle when they battle the other chess pieces oh. on the the field <laughs> i see i see <laughs> um but uh yeah so uh yeah look well uh, have had you ever seen it before we watched it for this no um i hadn't even heard of it uh until creative cave you like brought it up uh a long time ago mm-hmm. um no i had never heard of it i had never seen it uh how about you uh i had actually seen it uh we're gonna talk about it here it was you have a diorama of it i, think, right? <laughs> I just make dioramas of all the stuff that we cover at least uh the stuff that i may or may not enjoy Ooh, uh, but um but yeah we're uh it there was this weird cable channel like i had moved back in uh with my parents and they lived in the middle of nowhere in the early 2000s. So they had satellite TV. And on there was this channel called Trio. And they had a show called Brilliant but Canceled. And on there was the Look Well pilot. And I watched it back then. And uh, it was awesome. Uh, well, spoiler alert. And, um, and yeah, and that was, I think, kind of one of the reasons why it took me so long to get around to uh, covering it. Well, first, because, I mean you weren't excited about it but you didn't know anything about it so i i don't blame you well i mean i I wasn't not excited i I just didn't know anything about it. right right yeah exactly i mean it's if anything it's on me because i had seen it and i already knew how i felt about it if anything but you didn't want to influence my 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 feelings (laughs) no i mean steve i don't care about your feelings i I never take that that's why this that into account yeah that's why this works but no if anything it, it should have been like i know you hell's prob in, in the back of my mind i was like i know which way this episode is going to go so there was no suspense for me so uh, as you can see i'm yeah, a true. very um 
uh, oh, man, I can't think of the word. I only care about me, you hell. Not not the show mm-hmm. or you, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is why we never watch Look Well until today. And I guess we should say um, uh, you can go watch Look Well on uh, YouTube. Uh, I think there's like several copies up there. Um, and Yeah, funny enough, the uh, link that you sent me for it on YouTube is a TV like rip from the trio channel from the great but canceled yep uh, block I noticed that yeah yeah that's uh weird it's all coming back to me man um, and also uh, if you have any uh, future requests for us here at obscurity now please uh, don't hesitate to uh, drop them in the comments or shoot us an email blah blah all the links are in the description like you, yeah. you get it and I'll put a link to it uh to look well in the chat to the YouTube version, but you can find it just by, uh, you know, putting look well, full TV pilot, uh, into the old ye old search bar. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You don't even have to go to archive.org to watch it. Um, so <laughs> the quality though is not great. Unfortunately, no, the quality. I, I, and by that, I mean like the quality of the, um, the visuals, the rip. It, it, I think it was like, it's like two forty P or maybe three twenty. Uh, but the audio was good, though, and that's what's most important, in my opinion. Yeah, well, for sure. And in a way, I think it actually uh, adds to it because, uh, as we're going to uh, discuss, this actually became a, uh, you know, one of those tapes that was traded that you could probably buy at like a con in the early '90s. It sort of uh, built up its own like uh, cult following uh, because uh, the initial premiere was uh, July 28, 1991, and they uh, just sort of dumped it. Uh, on a, uh, like, as you can see, in the middle of summer, or at the end of summer, if you will, um, because at that point, uh, unfortunately, the the head of NBC had changed, uh, and the guy who did like it, Brandon Tur- Turnikoff, well, it was weird, according to which article you read, but I uh, listened to this interview with Adam West, he said that Brandon Turnikoff had died, uh, and then the new regime came in and they weren't interested in look well. So if you're watching this wondering why uh, this didn't uh, never took off, one of the reasons is because uh, the head of NBC had the audacity to die. I mean, pff, what, hmm. what are we doing here? Uh, <laughs> Man. <laughs> How dare he? Unreliable. Yeah. <laughs> Unreliable. <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, I should point out though that there are like, I don't know, something like, I saw something like six or seven versions of Look Well were uploaded to YouTube. Mm-hmm. So, so one of those other ones might be better quality. I, I didn't really like, I, I just went with the first link or whatever. Right. So, you know. Uh, and also. If, if you want to put it, if you, the listener, want to put in the extra effort of an additional five seconds of clicking that I refuse <laughs> to do. Uh, you know, if, if, if that's how you live your life, go ahead. Yes, yes. On your big bag, chair, if that's how you live your life. Uh, yeah, but it sounds to me like time's wasting you ooh, if that's how you live your there life. There it is again. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> also, one of these other <laughs> versions that we were too uh, too busy to click on uh, might have. There's an additional epilogue that was cut from the trio version for some reason. Oh yeah, because there is like a 25 minute one, mm-hmm. and I just didn't uh, <laughs> uh, bother watching it. We're... Oh, Creative KV's corner here in the chat. Uh, no fear. Um, is what he said in the chat. We don't have a know if you're short of the week, Creative KV, but we are covering Look Well just for you. Yeah, yeah. Or how how many tears are like streaming down your cheek right now? Because <laughs> that's what that's what we're all about. We're off to a great start here in 2024. We're making dreams happen and doing as little work as possible while making those dreams happen. Uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> So uh, one thing that I thought was uh, interesting, though, well, you know what? Let's just talk about the synopsis here, and I'll get back uh, to that later. Okay, so Look Well, it's a TV pilot uh, written by Conan O'Brien and um, Robert Smigel. There's only one episode, and it's 22 minutes long, depending on which version you click on. And uh, as I said, the original premiere date was July 28, 1991, and then it was later picked up by the Trio channel, and broadcast uh, um, 8-26-2003. And so here's the synopsis for Look Well. A washed-up TV action hero who at the peak of his career was ceremonially deputized by local law enforcement falsely believes he can solve crimes in real life. His student Jason becomes his sidekick, sort of. And uh, the director here is E.W. Swackhammer. Now... 
When you hear that name, what comes to mind? Uh, Swack Hammer. <laughs> Like just E W you Swaghammer. I mean, that's got to be like a fake name, right? Because it's like you Swaghammer. That is exactly uh, what I thought. I thought that maybe um, Conan or Robert Smigel were the uh, director, and they were just changing mm-hmm. their name a la Dark Place. But no, this is a real guy. He is basically a uh, sort of TV director legend. He directed mm. Mod Squad, The Partridge Family. Oh, and The Cosby Mysteries. <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man, <laughs> the 70s Amazing Spider-Man show. Uh, one of your favorite shows, Murder, She Wrote. And uh, Columbo goes to college. Like, If this is a made-up name, I could never find his real one, but that's what showed up on the IMDb. What a great name. People say, I have a great last name. No, no, no. You can't beat the swack. The swack. I don't ever. think people are saying that. What People are saying what? Nothing. Let's move on. That, that, I, uh, that I don't have a kidding. great name. Hey, back when I was doing yeah. background work, uh, I would hear that all the time. So you can't. No, I'm sure it was all the buzz amongst the other bees. Uh, <laughs> all the other uh, casting directors for background. It's like, you got to hire this honeycut guy. The way he stands there mm. and walks across the camera. Mm. Some mm, somebody called Jerry Seinfeld. We got his co-star for the B movie three. Or oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's a deep cut. That's why that's why you work here. All right. So, um, so I do want to mention look well, super fan creative cave in the chat. He mentioned that Robert Smigel, who's I think you already mentioned was the co-writer um, that uh, he uh, just released a movie on Netflix. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. Until he said it was with Adam Sandler. So I don't know anymore. But um, I do like Smigel. Smigel does the voice for uh he does Triumph, right? Yeah. The insult comic as well. Yeah, I'm about to get to the writers, and we might as well start off with uh, Robert Smigel, who, uh, as Yehel just said, is probably best known for Triumph, the insult comic dog. I figure if you don't know Triumph, then you probably know him. Uh, he's an SNL writer and also did all those TV funhouse cartoons, you know, like Gary oh, and yeah. Ace, the ambiguously gay duo. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, surprisingly, I never really knew this, he wrote both uh, Hotel Transylvania 1 and 2, and um, the uh, the Louie show. Everyone loved Louie for a minute there, and uh, numerous other things. Uh, and uh, then, of course, his writing partner here is uh, Conan O'Brien. And if you don't know him from Late Night with Conan O'Brien, then you might know him from his TBS show, Conan. Both of those are long gone. Uh, he also wrote... Andy Barker P.I. Did you ever watch Andy Barker P.I.? Man, that sounds really familiar. Well, but uh, I don't I don't know if I ever did. W- was that with Andy? Rick? Yes, it was. Like Basically, when um, Andy left uh, late night for a minute there. That's right. Man. That's what he left for. It was like on Fox, right? Well, that was I'm not sure. I thought it was like NBC or ABC. But yeah, basically, it is a detective, a detective show. Conan. Yeah, he's like a bumbling detective, mm-hmm. right? And it was pretty good. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, I thought it was good, too. Yeah, we might need to go and uh, cover that one as well. Um, but, of course, he's written um, uh, for The Simpsons, SNL, um, and, uh, I mean, he, he's done all kinds of stuff. Where, where are you at on Conan O'Brien, you hell? Oh, you know I love Conan. Um, I don't li- like. I don't watch the pod, well, slash listen to the podcast that he does now religiously mm-hmm. or anything. But uh, I still, at the very least, catch clips from it uh, almost every week. And sometimes, if there's a guest I care about, like Patrick Stewart was on there not too long nice. ago. Of course, <laughs> had to listen to that baby. Um, but yeah, I mean, Conan is never not funny, mm-hmm. um, and such a smart guy too. Whenever he, you know, talks about a serious subject matter, like. You know, he's a lot like uh, I was going to say, like like Stewart and um, Colbert. And I almost forgot that they're like all three really good friends and they've done like ongoing bits uh, on each other's shows sure. and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I-, I love Conan. Yeah, I mean, I just figure we'll probably never get a chance to talk about him again. But, uh, yeah, I-, I started watching Conan on a late night back in the day. I loved late night uh, mostly for the sketches and stuff. Uh, occasionally they would have a celebrity that I would care about. Then later I found out that, you know, he'd written some of my favorite uh, Simpsons episodes. Like my goal uh, for the longest time was to be on uh, the Conan O'Brien show, which sadly there are none. I guess I'll have to settle for the podcast. But when we first moved out here, I did get to go watch Conan at uh, TBS, and uh, it was pretty cool. Um, 
Nice. So yeah, we're both. Uh, what? Where were you? Uh, who, who do you think was better as far as like TBS talk show hosts, Conan O'Brien or George Lopez? <laughs> 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 I know it's a difficult. Ooh, uh, that's rough. I mean, yeah, I think. Uh, you, you, maybe at the end. Maybe yeah. at the end of this of this year. At the I'll, I'll check back in December and. Uh, See if you if that's giving you enough time to make your decision. I'll have to go back and watch some reruns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is also like produced by Lauren Michaels of SNL fame. Uh, if you're if you care to know that, uh, and uh, yeah, that's basically going to do it for me. Who are some of the thespians who performed and look well? All right. So of course, Adam West is our um, lead actor, and he plays the titular Lookwell. Um, I, I think everyone knows who Adam West is. Uh, probably most famous for portraying Batman in the 1960s show, which is a classic that we uh, already that reviewed. So if you want more yeah. Adam West content, <laughs> you know where to look. Well, we, we reviewed uh, the Batman movie. Right. Right. Um, we didn't review the Batman show, mm-hmm. um, but uh, maybe we'll do that at some point. Sure. But, um, anyways, he's been in a million, million other things, had a great career. He unfortunately passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, we've got Ron Frazier, who plays uh, Detective Kennery. Um, I didn't recognize this guy from anything else. He stopped acting in 1998. He was and a bunch of like um, other things, but nothing that really stuck out to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about you? Uh, you no, from anyone? I don't recognize him at all. Um, the I, I'm only going to mention two other people because uh, they there's basically just four people that we kind of see over and over in this pilot episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Todd Field, who plays Jason, although I do think it's funny that uh, Lookwell calls Jason like the wrong name a few times. He calls him Chase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's basically the Robin of this world, more yeah. or less. Yeah, but I'm I'm guessing that in the because we do see at one point Lookwell. When he goes home, and I know this is kind of spoiling it, but anyways, Lookwell like likes to watch his old TV show mm-hmm. that he was on Bannigan, and uh, I bet that like Chase was like his sidekick on the show or something, and when he's and he probably just like calls him Chase whenever he's going through a, a thing. But right. anyways, uh, so this guy's actually directed uh, quite a few things, but nothing big of note. I, I think a lot of this was like self funded stuff or like short films. Um, but, um, he's, uh, was an actor up to 2005. The one thing that I, um, recognized him from was Stranger Than Fiction, um, which is, uh, really good. I actually really like that quite a bit. Um, but, um, wait a minute. What's up? He's not the guy I thought he was. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Well, he was also in an episode of Tales from the Crypt, so good for him. Yeah. All right. So, and then we've got Deborah Richter, not related to Andy Richter. We did check ahead of time. Not his wife. She is. Uh, he, he wishes. <laughs> well, he's divorced, so maybe. <laughs> you know, and it will simplify things with the name. Anyway, she acted in a bunch of like uh, teenage type movies. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess she was like the um, eye candy, um, but she was in an episode of Airwolf. I mean, come on, nice. Airwolf. Um, and TJ Hooker no. with uh, Captain Kirk. Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. We really need to have like Shatner month, what, what one month. Oh. Just cover every, all, like like all his TV show stuff, like Rescue 911, Tech War. There you go. When's his birthday? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know the guy <laughs> who you worship's birthday? Uh, I don't worship Adam West. I'm more of a TNG guy. I do like TOS, but. And then, oh, you, I know you wanted me to mention you being the robosexual that you are, mm-hmm. that um, Deborah Richter was in Cyborg. Yeah, with Van uh, Dam. Uh, Creative KV has written a lot of things in the chat here. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, we're talk- he, well, this is back when we were talking about Conan and Creative KV in the chat mentioned that people say Conan's remotes are some of the best content best uh, he's released. Smuggle was part of a lot of the remotes from time to time. I, I agree. I love Conan's remotes. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, did you ever watch any of Conan O'Brien's, like, um, I think it was on Netflix, like a document, a travel documentary he did? No, no. I, I, I saw the documentary Conan O'Brien Can't Stop. Did you see Oh, that? I saw that too. I liked that a yeah, lot. Yeah, it was good. 
but not the yeah. other stuff. Yeah, I haven't watched the travel one. Um, it was released after I think the TBS show ended. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard it's good. I just, yeah, Patrick Stewart's not in it, so, <laughs> so why bother? Yeah, but uh, that's pretty much the cast that uh, I thought was worth uh, mentioning for now. All right, very, very good, very good. Um, so I guess we will go ahead and dive into the episode. Um, I've got some trivia that we can save for afterwards. Um, all right, so basically we start with the Look Well uh, opening, which uh, how would you describe the uh, the theme, the music for the opening? Um, I was like, is this show set in 1970-something, you know? But um, and, and because of the quality of it, I, I really thought it was. I was pretty surprised when I was finding out it was released in 1991. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's cool, though. I mean, I like it. It fits the show. Well, what, what did you yeah, think? Yeah, it's very uh, 70s cop show, which is exactly yeah. what you want here. Um, and, you know, usually I say that, because you know, in the early 2000s, you know, that's when all a lot of the throwback shows uh, started. And I usually say that it started with, uh, you know, Dark Place in 2003. But here we are in 1991, and Conan O'Brien is beating everyone to the punch because he's just so mm-hmm. ahead of the game. Uh, I mean, do you get Dark Place vibes from Look Well? So not really, no. to be honest with you. Uh, maybe a little bit, but I mostly got um, – like a weird combination of like the naked gun style airplane movies mm-hmm. mixed with the humor sometimes almost was like arrested development esque. Uh, like when they have, um, we're going to get to it later, but there's like one point where they go into like this, um, uh, l- l- like a charity event mm-hmm. uh, it's organized to like help homeless people in the banner sense, like the homeless. They're everyone's problem. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, just great. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you would definitely... I, I, I mean, they literally have uh, a scene exactly like this, but it's for, like, not homeless people. Well, it's for something else in Arrested Development. So it reminded me of that. And, um, yeah. Um, I, I could see somebody thinking it reminds them of Dark Place, but uh, I didn't quite see it that way because there's only... Because Lookwell is the only, like, kind of moron. Right. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can see that. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the the police music starts playing. Adam West basically walks towards the camera. There's police tape, and he just rips that tape up and walks right into the crime scene. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then there's a few other sort of uh, funny little uh, vignettes. My my favorite is when he's like, he walks up to like a uniformed cop, and he basically like points one way. And points the other way, and he just walks, and the cop just looks at him like, <laughs> "Who is this guy? Like, what?" Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, behavior that we, everything Lookwell does would get you shot by a cop. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's there's and then there's a few other sort of funny things. Like there's one of when they show like Adam West's name, he's like, <laughs> I don't know, looking like this for some reason, like some, like he's in some sort of uh, commercial or something for like kids candy or whatever. I, I don't know. But anyway, it's a short opening, but effective. And then we are inside of a uh, casting office, basically in a current day um, Hollywood, which I guess back then would be the 90s. Um, and they say they're looking for um, actors for Happy Days, the next generation. And then we see Lookwell, who is dressed clearly a nod to Star Trek: The Next Generation, which would have been in its fourth season at the time, uh, and really hitting its stride after the big Best of Both Worlds finale at the end of season three. Um, so yeah, no wonder that uh, I'm sure there were everyone on staff was watching it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, you know, uh, I'm sure that's what was happening. You know, Adam West did uh, like an animated, um, I think it was not, maybe five years ago. I was going to say before he died, obviously, he recorded a, uh, like they did like a 1960s cartoon version, animated version of, Jesus, I can't talk. They did an animated version of the 1960s Batman show and they brought back like Adam West for Oh, I saw it, that. And, it was great. I loved it. Yeah. Well, William Shatner uh, is in that as well. I think he, I can't, I think he plays one of the villains. I can't remember who. But, um, Do we need to run the bumper, you think? 
No, I mean, <laughs> okay. I, nobody from here was directly in Star Trek. All but, right, suit yourself. A few did work with William Shen. A few had the pleasure of uh, working with Mr. You get it. You're obsessed with him. You can't even talk. You're thinking about him. Yeah, go ahead and drink your uh, cauldron of William Shatner jizz. <laughs> uh, I sweeten it with uh, tears of his that I've had uh, sent to me. <laughs> All right, moving on. So he's dressed like the Fonz with this ridiculous like wig, uh, leather jacket, and everything. And he's talking. He's surrounded by a couple of uh, younger actors, and he's kind of like explaining what happened to his um, uh, his show. And they go, oh, yeah, you were uh, Bennigan? He's like, Bannigan. And they basically, they keep getting the name wrong. Uh, they can't remember. Uh, and finally, they figure out who it is. And then a casting director comes out and announces that they already found an actor. And then everybody uh, leaves. And then, but look well, he, he looks at him and he's just like, those fools or, or something like that. Do you remember what he says? Yeah, he says, he, like, as they're walking away, he goes, the, those fools better for us or something like that we're better know? for it yeah that's what he says yeah yeah so the three of them uh look well and the other two actors they walk out um to look well's car and it's like this sweet i don't know vintage i don't know cars if there's one thing i know less about than sports it's cars but uh one of the actors is like "Ooh, nice car mr look well and he's like thank you and then he um, he drives away directly to a car rental uh, place to return the car, and then he sort of like haggles with the clerk about the the price. And then a yeah, because the clerk's like, okay, that'll be fifty bucks. It was two hours, and he's like, I could have sworn it was an hour and forty five minutes. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Then the other guys like, it's pretty funny seeing the other guys like, uh, well, we round up to the next hour. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, next hour. It's in your thing you signed or whatever. And then he's like, and then uh, I can't remember what uh, Lookwell says to him, but then the guy says something back, and then <laughs> Lookwell says, how about I give you a 20 and we agree to disagree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, does it, see, that's, see, that kind of talk would, like, work in a 70s cop show, but in real life in the 90s, no. Uh, nah, but anyway, nah. a police cruiser speeds by, and uh, Lookwell takes that as his uh, cue to basically intervene. He's like, I better check it out. And he just drives on with the car. Um, and Yeah, never pays. Yeah, never pays. So two beat cops are uh, questioning um, the, the owner of the rental place. And then Lookwell intervenes. Uh, the cops tell him to step aside. But Lookwell reminds him that he used to play a cop named Bennigan on TV. And then they go through that sort of same shtick of, you mean Bannigan? Uh, and he's like, no, that was George Papard or something like that. Yeah, Brannigan with an R? Like, no, that was this other guy. Right. That was Bannigan. Right. Since I'm, uh, since we're talking about it, did you ever watch an episode of Only uh, Murders in the Building? No. Well, Steve Martin basically plays look well, more or less. He plays a guy who used to be a 70s uh, cop, but, you know, it's not like the way Adam West did it. It's, uh, you know, ooh, I'm pathetic now and I need a job. And I mean, I guess that's kind of the same, but but let's just say they borrowed slash stole a lot from look well. Mm. Uh, Okay. All right. Uh, but, uh, so the cop is like, eh, that's the fifth classic car stolen this week. And Lookwell is like, hmm, sounds like a string of classic car thieves. You boys better check it out. And he then quotes Shakespeare at them. And the car rental owner tells him to get lost. And then Lookwell, he like, he goes very well. And then he walks to his car and he turns, Lookwell always has to get the last word in the scene, uh, which I would say is like typical for sort of like, 70s tv writing you know you got to have that transition it's like in um you know csi miami whenever that one guy would like come up to the dead body and he would be like ah looks like he died of uh diabetes and then he puts on the glasses and the music plays you know what i'm saying yeah yeah uh yeah. so yeah that's uh that's look well here and he looks at the car owner and he says and you need to be more careful what scum you rent cars to. And then he gets into the rental car that he rented from him and drives away, which is just hilarious. Uh, he called himself scum, which just cracked me up. So now we cut to uh, uh, Lookwell's home. And Lookwell enters, and he's got, like, a housekeeper. And uh, he's like, uh, did you get that shopping done I asked for? And then what does she say? 
Um, oh, she she tells him that the store said they don't make that uh, sp- hairspray anymore <laughs> or that, that can of spray. And then in classic uh, sort of Adam West and fashion, he goes, those fools. <laughs> like, er- <laughs> everyone else is wrong. No, not look well. Everyone else. Well, they're not, everybody else isn't just wrong. They're, like, wrong in a, in a, in a truly catastrophic way yeah. as far as he's concerned. <laughs> no matter what. The the delivery is so great. Yeah, you compared it to, uh, you know, Naked Gun or Police Squad. It's like, yeah, everything is, like, so serious and deadpan. It's the, just awesome. I, I, I found that he played Lookwell, to me, uh, a bit like he played the 1960s Batman. Oh. If... Batman was a complete moron, yeah. basically. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, I mean, because I mean, I've watched. I mean, granted, Adam West has like a very recognizable voice, mm-hmm. and he tends to have like you know a similar. Not that he's not a great actor, but you know, he's got his uh, Adam Westism, sure. if you will. Absolutely. But I feel like he really leaned into like a similar delivery that uh, when he did Bruce Wayne and Batman. I mean. Almost exactly like it, 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 but it's just a difference. It's like the things he's saying are stupid now. Right, exactly. And and it's amazing. Oh, 100%. I mean, they wrote this uh, specifically for him. Uh, and, uh, you know, in my research, apparently he was uh, really excited about it. And, uh, I mean, they all were. But anyway, moving on. Uh, so Lookwell checks his answering machine, and all the messages are for his nephew, Matt. And they're from, like huge like legendary directors in hollywood like francis ford coppola he calls back several times uh someone from uh steven spielberg's office calls and finally uh, and while these are going on look well goes to the <laughs> this is such a weird gag he goes to the freezer and gets this popsicle that's supposed to make his like skin tighter on his face so he can look younger yeah, do you remember the name of the pops? Uh, uh, not off the top of my head. Uh, let, let me see, see, popsicle. Why didn't I write that down? But uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We, it's just great that you know he lives in a world where but, there's uh, the grocery store is selling skin tightening popsicles specifically for him. Yeah, uh, I do want to talk a little bit more about the messages left on the answering machine. Mm-hmm. You know, like you've said, like they're for his nephew. Like all the messages that were left were from like. Uh, either casting agents mm-hmm. uh, or like directors, and it's so funny because it starts off with something like, "Hey, uh, do you remember the and like Marty? Let's just say is the name of mm-hmm. his nephew. I can't remember the name, but it's like, yeah. uh, hey, Marty, uh, th- yeah, that movie uh, with Francis Ford Coppola. It turns out that he's interested. You know, give me a call back, and then the next message is like, oh yeah, hey, listen, I canceled your your appearance on Happiness because this Ford Coppola thing's gonna be huge, but you need to call him back. And then the next message is Francis Ford Coppola because mm. he wants him so bad. <laughs> He's like, hey, Marty, it's me, Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> Call me back. And then the next one's like, hey, Steven Spielberg really wants to be with me. <laughs> and then uh, Adam West is like, well, no messages for me. Great. <laughs> I can I can just relax and watch TV. And he, like, deletes all the messages. Yep, and then goes and sits down and sadly eats his popsicle while he watches his old show that he was in. He's got... He opens a shelf to reveal like his own personally dubbed copies of VHS tapes of uh, Bannigan, uh, which is just great. Uh, it's sad and yeah. great all at the same time. Um, but so let's see, moving on. Um, and now we're in uh, exterior shot. We see like a small sort of handwritten sign that says Ty Lookwell's acting workshop. And he's uh, they're watching a scene where uh, Bannigan arrests uh, a criminal and uh, basically... Yeah, like he's showing the the, the class a scene from Bannigan. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, you're going to do time. Like, I don't know. Then he says the, the, the pimp's name or whatever. It stops it, like, after the one line. And then just the way he sort of pontificates about just the most pointless line. It was like uh, to his class. Uh, and, you know... How- yeah, he's like, oh, in this scene, I had to both... Uh, you know, express satisfaction <laughs> at catching my man, but also, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, like anger or right, something yeah, at just... like w- w- what what he did, and you know, then he's like tells the class like now. I want you two to, in this scene from like Hamlet or some Shakespeare thing, 
uh, do the same thing. Uh, no, he says, with the lessons we just learned right. from, from my scene, you know, I want you to apply it to this scene. And the scene that they play out has nothing to, it's nothing like it, the the Bannigan thing at all. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was awesome, you know, sort of just making fun of acting classes. Uh, it reminded me a lot of, um, um, oh, shoot, that, that show that was that just ended uh barry barry reminded me of barry they sort of make fun of the whole acting uh workshop thing there as well uh but yeah so they move on and some of the other um students get up and they do uh yeah like you said they they bring their own <laughs> a sort of acting to it and uh look well dissects their um, performances. One of the actors says he was trying to transport his life experience into the scene, and then that triggers Lookwell into figuring out what's going on with the case involving the um, the rental cars, basically. And the way, but, but he does it like in that class. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You're, you're a good. Experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, he he does it in, as you were saying, the classic sort of Batman style, and it's really just like, oh well. well you know, he said transport. Transport means cars. Cars go where? And like just sort of keeps going. Yeah, he's like transportation. They're being transported. <laughs> I, I thought there was about to be a Star Trek reference. Uh, uh, a transport. You wanted there so, to I mean, be was, one, but it wasn't going to happen, mister. I was a little let down. Well, I got to be honest with you. At this point in the show, I wasn't sold on it yet. Because because this is only like maybe like five minutes into it, maybe six mm-hmm. minutes into it. Um and not, and I didn't really think it was bad, but I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to really enjoy this as much as I thought I would when I saw Adam West. Mm. Uh, like now kind of because I feel like they do a really good job of kind of ramping up the ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, he's not like it, quite insane right from the beginning. Right. Uh, and uh, I think it really plays to its strengths. And now kind of looking back like at the some of those early scenes, like when he's, you know, uh, trying to negotiate his car rental, you know, p- price or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, all that stuff's, like, extra funny now knowing what a fucking crazy person Yes. Is. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and so, yeah, he basically in the middle of class, he tells, like, one of the other students to take over. And he says he has to go talk to his good friends, the police, or something like that. He basically has another sort of transition line. Now we're at a sort of classic-looking uh, police station. Lookwell is trying to explain to the desk cop who he is. He shows him his uh, honorary Crime Stopper badge that he was awarded back when he was in. And it's like encased in like <laughs> acrylic plastic, like yeah. thick, <laughs> like, like like inch and a half thick acrylic plastic. So it's this awkward thing that he somehow has in a pocket. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's basically a trophy, more or less. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, then as he's about to kick de- get kicked out, Detective Kennery shows up. Uh, Lookwell says that Kennery was like the um, police. Um, what's the what's the term I'm looking for here? He he was like his um, made sure that all the police work was on the up and up in the show or whatever. Um, yeah, he, he was the consultant. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lookwell tells Kennery he's got a break in the car thief case. And Kennery very uh, delicately tries to tell him he's like. I thought I made it clear that we don't need you around here anymore. <laughs> uh, and um, but Kennery tells him, yeah, but that, but then he also tells him that all of the cars are imports and they're being held somewhere. The desk cop comes in and tells Kennery the commissioner wants to see him in reality, and Lookwell leaves. But before, yeah, he, he's like the commissioner heard who you're with and he'd like you to come visit him in reality or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. And uh, then um, he goes, uh, do you remember the, the exit line here? I've got it written down. I was just curious if you've got it. No, no, I don't remember off the top of well, my head. Well, this is the classic one. He says, very well, remember this, gentlemen. I have a lot of free time. And then he very dramatically. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny because he like says it like a threat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And just the way he walks out of the door, it's like, you know, again, in a real show, it would be like some sort of badass one line. But here he's just like, yeah, I'm old and I have a lot of free time. So watch out. It's so good. Uh, 
So Look Well is now at this sort of, you know, typical Hollywood kind of restaurant. Uh, there's pictures of actors behind him, and he's surrounded by his students. Uh, Look Well then uh, deduces kind of the same way he did before um, that the cars are being painted. So uh, he uses the yellow pages. <laughs> I mean, this this is doubly funny because here we are in, you know, 2024 when most, you know, young people don't even know what the yellow yeah. pages are. And uh, he picks the first auto body shop, or no, he picks the largest auto body shop that he can find and tells his students he's going to do a little acting, a little undercover acting. And uh, then we uh, cut to look well, dressed like your typical like 1950s like gas station attendant, like in this. Yeah, yeah. At first, I thought he was almost. I was like, is he dressed like a like a 1950s ice cream uh, milk it man like or that something? Too, but, yeah, or ice cream man? Sure, yeah. But the thing is, like, it's an all white painter's suit, mm-hmm. but he added a bow tie to it. <laughs> Why? Yeah, just because it's hilarious. That's why. Uh, and um, and the the weird thing here is that he's actually uh, being uh, given a job by, I guess, the owner of this body shop and his like uh, mechanic. <laughs> and this scene, oh my god, was hilarious. Uh, so they basically are like, hey, go ahead. You know, you can start by you know stripping this paint off over here, and then look well. He goes, um, oh, very well. Just let me know if you have any other jobs you need me to do you know basically trying to imply that uh you know that there's some you know shady work going on and that if they need it to be done he can do it and uh the mechanic is like uh uh are you are you gay uh (laughs) and then like even even but but it was cool back then the the guy was like you know if uh, the owner was like, "Hey, if you are, I, I don't care. Just, just do the job or something like that." Yeah, yeah. The the, the owner is very progressive. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> basically, like, 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 yeah, like the his other employees, the one that has a problem with him maybe being gay, yeah, he's like, "Is he gay or something?" And the employer is like, "Yeah, who cares? As long as he does a good job, like, like right. I don't care." But but then like they start to think <laughs> they go through this thing where like Adam was is like, "Well, if there's anything." else you need me to do <laughs> and then the other mechanic it, is like i told you we're not into that stuff and then look well is like well i'll i'll be sure to deliver if you know what i mean <laughs> if you need right something. he says that and then like... at the end of the scene he goes well that's not what i hear and then cut to uh look oh yeah in response to when they say that they're not into that yeah 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 and then cut to look it, it's it's the classic you know two people having a different conversation right uh, right right bit. yeah and they do it uh, quite well, and it's hilarious. And then a uh, cut to Lookwell is back with his students. He's got glasses on because he obviously got beat up. Uh, and um, so, yeah, he's uh, in his uh, class again. And um, uh, I think Jason was like, so you realize, like, so what was the point of all this? And Lookwell is like, I realized that there was no wrongdoing going on or deduced. He said, I deduced while they were beating me up. I deduced that there was no wrongdoing going on. Yeah. Well, he says like, cause they're like, how did, how did you, uh, what happened? You know, how'd you get beat up? And he's like, I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> he like pretends like he doesn't know what happened. Um, and by the way, smoke monster is in the live chat. He says, hello from LAX. Thank you. Um, Ugh, for LAX, being here. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, and and then like uh, the student who Lookwell first calls Chase, mm-hmm. uh, then he calls him Jason mm-hmm. uh, goes, for the re- for for most of the rest of the episode. But he does call him like Chase one other time, right. which I think is pretty funny. He like messes up his name, but yeah, he, he he's like, oh, uh, but while they thought I was unconscious, yeah, because J- Jason's like, oh, so uh, they weren't doing anything? Like, so it was like a waste of time or something like that? And he's like, oh, well, while they thought I was unconscious, I went looking through their files and I found out something important. And Jason's like, oh, you figured out who did it or whatever? He's like, ah, no, 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 they had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that there was no... But he says it like it's a victory. Right, that there was no wrongdoing going on. And uh, he also, uh, there was also, I can't remember if it was before or after that, but uh, he goes... Uh, look well to Jason's comments like try to keep up Jason like and he, Jason yeah, looked yeah, legitimately yeah. No, no, he offended says, 
When Jason says that, uh, oh, so you figured out that they weren't involved at all? He goes, nice of you to catch up with the rest of us, Chase. (laughs) And he's like, (laughs) he gives like a... (laughs) And Chase is like, what the fuck? (laughs) It was awesome. Uh, Yeah, because like if this had been like Batman, you know, it would just roll off of Robin's back. But Jason, he's legitimately offended. Um, Yeah. This is when I really started getting into it, where, where I was like, okay, this is pretty damn funny. Nice, nice. So, uh, let's see. One of the students triggers Lookwell's deductions again, and he thinks that the cars are going to be at a Grand Prix auto race, and he tells his student Jason that they're going to go do a little Grand Prix auto racing, which, I mean, uh, just the way he delivers it is hilarious. Uh, Make sure you go check it out on your own. So now we cut to, it's basically like the backstage entrance of... um, of this Grand Prix that a guy is wearing a referee shirt, <laughs> which, which I kind of thought. Was yeah. Yeah. He's, he's like a racetrack, like a f- official for the race, but yeah, he's wearing like a long sleeve NFL referee shirt right. for some reason. And yeah, but that's okay because Adam West, AKA look well shows up. Like, uh, what's that Hannah Barbara cartoon character that races? He's like a villain. Oh, uh, Snidely whiplash. Yeah. He shows up looking like kind of like Snidely whiplash. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so they're basically arguing with this referee, and uh, Lookwell does his old very well and tries to walk away, and then he runs and tries to climb the fence, and now uh, cut to prison, and Jason is literally being passed between, and I read this later, they're, I don't know why this is important, but it's like two Samoan, like, uh, prisoners or whatever, uh, and um, look. Let's see. Look well, and it basically ends up being just a uh, a trust throw exercise. So he's still yeah. They're basically like pushing Jason back and forth between the two of them, but he's got to like remain limp. So he's almost like being pushed back and forth, like like if he was on a pendulum. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, so Kennery comes and bails him out and uh, tells him that two more cars were stolen. And this is where we get the uh, classic uh, line. Uh, like Jason is mad because he feels like. They wasted a bunch of time with that uh, that Grand Prix thing, and Yell's already said it twice. So he says, "You never waste time, Jason. Time wastes you." Which, oh man, is that not a no fear shirt right there? Right, right. And he says it like he just said the world's most profound. It thing, is you though. Know? It is profound. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, it's not. <laughs> it is because time is wasting us. It is. <laughs> Um, I, I like to think that time is like a companion, Steve, mm. that that moves along with us. That that's a line from Star Trek Generations. Oh, I pair obviously, a bit, but... obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, the the pop the popsicles that um the skin, um uh, pops firming popsicles that you were talking about earlier, they're called firm pops. Ah, nice, well done. Uh. Let's see. I'm looking at all the... There's a lot of action going on in our chat here. Mostly Creative KB. I think we really made his day. Or year. Let us know if you have a better year than this this day, Creative KB. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on. Um, so, Kennery tells... Uh, let's see. Um, Kennery tells him... I think at this point is... Um... I think the next thing they try to do is, is crash that uh, the homeless thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a um, sort of look well has kind of like a, uh, I don't know, I guess you want a long, dark night of the soul or whatever, where he's basically walking oh, that's right. through the park to sad music. And um, yeah, because basically Kennery told him not to waste his time. And uh, look well is like he takes his. Yeah, because Kennery says that like they agreed um, not to press charges mm-hmm. as long as you as don't. Long... Uh, yeah. W- waste any or show up basically. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you don't show up at the race and stop interfering uh, in the investigation. Yeah. Uh, and, and then like um, in another, and, you know, the Shakespeare stuff is like constantly reoccurring. Mm-hmm. And this is what you're getting at where look well goes. He's like, you know, sulking at the park and eventually walks over to like a statue, this giant statue of like William Shakespeare Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of pontificates about the situation. Yeah, right. Um, And uh, somehow he deduces to go to this uh, fundraiser for the homeless. Um, Yeah, well, he starts like talking to the to the William Shakespeare statue mm -hmm. and, you know, just having like a back and forth with himself about 
what's going on. And again, like similar to earlier where he's like transporter, ah, right. you know, uh, he deduces, you know, yet something else. Uh, and uh, he, he figures out like he, he that it must be the rental shop owner, right? Um, that's that's stealing the cars mm-hmm. for the insurance money. He's like, oh, who who drives these cars? Oh, the people that own the cars drive the cars. <laughs> like he has this weird like yes. things like and if and wh- who benefits if their own cars get stolen? Oh, they do. You know. So now he thinks like it's this guy that owns the rental shop where the cars have been stolen from that's doing it for the insurance money. Right, so he shows up dressed like a bum or a hobo from the 40s, like one that you would- Like a Looney Tunes bo- uh, hobo. Yeah, with a bindle and everything. And uh, his uh, the, the one uh, female actress is there with, uh, she's also in on it, but she's doing like the typical, you know, American actress with her fake British accent. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. So she is like the Duchess or whatever, and, and he's the hobo that she brought in. And um, so Lookwell goes and talks to the car rental owner, whose name is Al- Alberti. Um, then um, it doesn't really go anywhere. So he goes out to the valet where Jason is working. Like, that's like, this is his part time job as being a valet. He asks for the keys to Alberti's car. And then he tries to hide in the back seat, but Alberti sees him. And, uh, but then, uh, for whatever reason, Lookwell is just like, Jason, uh, actress, everybody get in now. And then they speed off and the cops follow them. They've got the lights on. And- whoa, 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 whoa. We got to rewind. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Steve, but uh, I made a couple of notes here because at the party, mm-hmm. um, and which, you know, uh, what's the guy's name? A birdie or whatever. Alberti. He's, he's the one, I guess, like running the charity function for, uh, to benefit, you know, homeless, uh, people. Mm-hmm. And while they're at the party, uh, and, uh, Lookwell starts walking around dressed as this like caricature of a homeless person, right. he is like walking through the party and he says some really funny stuff. Uh, first of all, like I mentioned earlier, there's a big banner at the charity event that says the homeless and underneath they're everyone's problem. Right, right, right. <laughs> Which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, he's walking around and he's like saying stuff to like the rich patrons there, like, excuse me, excuse me, a homeless, homeless person coming yeah, through. I've, I've... And he says at one point, the sidewalk is my pillow <laughs> to somebody. <laughs> he's also like one side. I have to eat out of the trash. They... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then he also just says as he's walking around, kind of mutters to himself, oh, uh, nice to be indoors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like the typical stuff that an insane actor would do if they were pretending to be homeless. It's it's great. Yeah. It's awesome. And then when when, when he sees uh, Jason at the at the front, you know, the, the guy that's like his valet, the, the valet works his side job as a valet and is also a well student. When Lookwell sees him, he goes, Jason, it's me. Look well. Yeah. As if no one would be able to recognize him. <laughs> yeah, so so then they all pile into Alberti's car. The cops are chasing him. They even open fire on them, which I mean is a little much, but this is a TV show, so you just go with it. And um Lookwell leads them, the cops, to the uh, rental place, and then there that's when he he accuses Alberti, but Kennery takes him by the arm. And he's like, you know, look well, you idiot. Alberti was working with us like this was a sting. But then Alberti realizes that uh, like his um, his clerk or whatever uh, w- was staying after hours and he didn't need to be there. So they basically find out that it was an inside job, that it was Alberti's like uh, clerk, basically, who was stealing the yeah. cars. And um so Lookwell takes that as a victory, <laughs> and uh, in his classic sort of exit line, he uh, says, uh, um, Lookwell goes, it was a pleasure working with you, and gives the cops a headshot. Meanwhile, one of the cops like looks over at Kennery, and he's like, yeah, but he was accusing Alberti, and like uh, Kennery was like, oh, just, just, just let him have it. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and that is basically the end of the look well pilot. Uh, anything else to add for the last scene? No, no. Um, I did uh, want to point out that I've added also a link for the 25 minute version of uh, look well, the one with the extended scenes. And it actually does look to be in better quality mm. than the other one that we had watched. So um, that's on YouTube. I've put that into the chat. Nice. But no, uh, really nothing else to add. Um, 
yeah the uh the ending was like so ridiculous mm -hmm. uh uh, but you know, it was good. Like, like I love the way the insanity kept ramp ramping up, but, uh, we have nothing else to add. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to render. All right. Let's render away. All right. Mr. Velasquez, do you think the look well pilot should be remembered for all of human history? or tossed in the black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again. Oh, yeah. Uh, this should definitely be remembered. It sucks that uh, it, you know, never went anywhere and that there weren't more made. Um, I, I, you know, th this is one of those things that is probably might be a little difficult to keep on for more than a season because it is so, like, out there, mm -hmm. like the character look well. Uh, although Conan, if anybody could do it, Conan and, you know, Robert Smigel, I, I, I could see them doing it. But uh, yeah, I thought it was really funny. It's really smart. Uh, all the performances are, are really, really good. Um, I, I do uh, wish I would have watched the 25 minute version. I'll probably uh, see, try to go through that and see what <clears throat> few minutes I missed. But yeah, and uh, I suspect that you also uh, want to uh, save it as well or remember. You deduce correctly, old chum. Uh, but yeah, now look well is great. I loved it back when I watched it in 2003. It uh, totally holds up. I think it would have fit in well on um, like Adult Swim back when they were running the live action stuff like, uh, you know, Tim and Eric or Dark Place. Uh, maybe if it was, you know, like just a 15, 20 minute show that uh, people like us would enjoy. I think it would have found its place on Adult Swim. But sadly, there was no Adult Swim uh, back in 1991. But yeah, this is just my type of humor. You know, it makes fun of uh, the acting business. It's just uh, funny all around. I mean, I it's fantastic. And yes, for all those uh, reasons, it shall be remembered. In accordance to Obscure to Now, the most important streaming YouTube podcast in all of the internet, you shall be remembered. Yes. Good show. Good, good show. Man, uh, what's up? I was gonna say, like, this was released. Uh, I think you mentioned in two thousand three, mm -hmm. uh, and what a year! Two thousand three, you had Look Well. You also had uh, Metallica release Saint Anger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just, that you know, that was a really joke of an album, year. right? <laughs> uh, I, I I like it to be honest. Uh, it did take some growing. Uh, some time to grow on me. It, you know, the real problem with it is just like the the production on it is uh, non-existent. Okay, okay, but back to look well real quick. All right, so Robert... No, 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 no. I want to discuss uh, the lyrics on St. Anger. What do you think about the line, my lifestyle determines my death style? That sounds Frank like shit. Anyway, okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, so Robert Smigel said that at one point there was uh, producers who were trying to make a look well movie. Um, but oh, wow. he, uh, with the likes of they, he basically turned it down cause they didn't want to use Adam West. They wanted to use Nicholas cage. What do you think of that? <sighs> Man, that kind of character could work for sure. Uh, if Nicholas cage was doing it, I mean, you could just not call it look well. Um, you know, that's not how they roll. But... But it's not like any. It's not like Look Well has like this like big following. You it's know, got, I don't think it would really matter. I mean, from it. what I was reading, it's got a pretty strong uh, cult following. Everyone refers to it as the funniest show that never got made, or the funniest pilot that never but, got made. But if they did a movie, you know, based on it, I, I think Nick Cage alone playing that kind of character will sell it more than whatever you name it. I, and the character. I could see it. I agree with that. Yeah, they should just so, you know. do their own. Or maybe make it like look well son or something like that. Or <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he already, you know, played, I guess, himself in that movie. Did you see that movie? What was it even called? Um, I, I need more than did you see that movie. Yeah, what is it even called? There's one with uh, him and Pedro Pascal where he played himself. Um and Pedro Pascal was a super fan who like. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't watch. Pretty that funny. I laughed pretty hard at that That's one. Good. Um, but uh, anything else to add before we? Oh wait, Creative KV. Yeah, we actually talked about it. this. Was released in 1991, not 2003. Yeah, I mean 2003 was when uh, Trio uh, broadcasted it. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then 1991 was when this was released. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I want to read something to you. Just uh, I guess we should have done. <laughs> I was just thinking like I, I and I did not mean to like turn this into like a Metallica oh, lyric Jesus. discussion. But like some of the lyrics like from that album, St. Anger, sound like no fear shirts. Oh, OK. Now, uh, now you brought it to uh, my interest. OK. Okay, so first there's the one I mentioned from Frantic. My lifestyle determines my dead style. No fear. <laughs> no fear. That works, right? <laughs> it's so stupid. Right. <laughs> what what don't kill <laughs> Now I want to point out this is I'm a big Metallica fan, but this album has the worst lyrics by far. And it's because they let everybody in the band write the lyrics mm-hmm. this time. Um but uh here's another one. What don't kill ya make ya more strong. No fear. Wow, wow, no fear indeed. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm madly in anger with you. <laughs> Instead of I'm madly in love with you, you get it, Steve? Oh, my God. That just smacks of, like, trying so hard to be edgy. Wow. Uh, I, I got one, one more, one more. It's my world. You can't have it. Oh That's God. it. <laughs> Creative KB says, no tears for fears. Everybody wants to fear the world. Now that, <laughs> I like that. Any tears for fears reference I'll take any day of the week. Um, I did want to say briefly that I watched uh, the movie Poor Things. Have you heard of this? No. It is a, a pretty awesome, like bizarre kind of like A24 uh, type movie. I'm not sure if it if, if it was exactly A24. Uh, it's a weird sort of retelling of Frankenstein with Emma Stone. She's basically Frankenstein in it or a version of him. Uh, and it takes place in this like crazy alternate historical, I think you might dig it. Like we went and saw it since we never get to go to the movies because of our, uh, beloved son, we took advantage and we were at my, uh, my dad's house and we went and saw it and it's awesome. It's, uh, it's funny. It's for adults. Uh, if you and what does that mean? There's like uh, sex scenes in it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's very, it's R rated for a reason. But, I mean, it's not, like, stupid, though. It's well-written and well-acted. Willem Dafoe, of course, is awesome in it, and uh, everyone else is as well. Okay. Maybe maybe I'll check it out. I, I do. This is a pretty good cast. Dafoe, Mark mm-hmm. Ruffalo, Emma Stone, mm-hmm. uh, Charlie Hiscock. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's this actor's name. Charlie Hiscock. Directed is, by uh, E.W. Swackhammer. What? <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess this guy's in Ted Lasso. This Charlie Hiscock. Mm-hmm. Um, well, good, good for him because that with that name, that could, his career could have gone into a different type of film. Same with E.W. Swackhammer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think that's it for us here. Uh, the very first episode of 2024 for Obscurity. Now, uh, let's see. Anything gainers would like you could recommend, Steve? Well, I mean, aside from poor things, what else did I watch? Um, I watched Drive with my dad, and he really liked it. Um, so that was a winner. If you've never seen Drive, you should go watch it. You like Drive, don't you? Is, uh, is that with that blonde guy? What's his name? Ryan, uh, Ryan Goslin. Yes. Ryan Goslin. Yeah. Uh, no, I've never seen it. I, I don't remember why I didn't watch it. Maybe because I don't care about cars or something. Well, it's, I don't know. it's uh, not really about cars. It's just a really good kind of like neo noir. Uh, it's got an awesome soundtrack. Like awesome cinematography and atmosphere, um, it's uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe maybe one day. <laughs> That's a... I still need to watch. Uh, I just remembered because Gosling's in it too. I need to watch Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh yeah, that. you should for sure. I thought you were gonna say just, Barbie. Just... <laughs> no, I, I oh I haven't watched that either, which I do want to watch. Uh, I've heard it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'll um, be honest, it's pretty low on my list. Um, but someday, someday. When, yeah, but you've got you, you have interesting taste. Uh, I'm not surprised you didn't like it, but, but I, I, I think from I, what I haven't I've seen watched it, I haven't even made an opinion yet. Oh, oh, I thought you were saying that you watch it and it's low on your list. No, I'm just of, saying uh, like I'm slightly interested. Is all I'm saying. I I wasn't super interested until you know some people I know that are like kind of like you and I where we're kind of very cynical mm-hmm. about you know media in general and it's we're kind of hard to please mm-hmm. or maybe to a fault. Um, no, uh, 
no, no, you're right. The, those fools, yes. Steve. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, anyways, a few people that I know that are similar uh, to us uh, watched it and liked it. So I'm like, all right, I'll give it a watch, uh, the Barbie movie. But, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't watched Blade Runner 2049 yet, but just because it's like three hours and change, I think, if I remember right. What? We're pretty close. Oh, yeah, that I reminds so. me. I watched also with my dad. I watched uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, that new Martin Scorsese movie. Uh, if you got, yeah, it looks boring. If you've got oh, three and a half hours to kill, it's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Man, talk about time wasting you. Uh, <laughs> hey, you didn't even watch it. How can you shit on it if you haven't even watched it? Yeah, I'm not shitting on it. It's just a long movie. Uh, like Blade Runner 2049, I know it's going to be good, but it's two hours and 43 minutes. Oh, that's a short movie a these of... days. <laughs> It's just a lot of time, man. Oh, like, I know. If a movie's more than 90 minutes, I usually these days will watch it like in two sittings oh it took it it took two sittings for killers of the flower moon and i will admit if it wasn't you know for my dad and his love of like all things like western it would have taken me a long time to get around to watch oh it's a western Uh. it's historical western uh i don't know i I don't i don't like i don't like the what's things set in the west generally unless it's uh briscoe county jr right (laughs) Oh, oh, right, right. Well, <laughs> that's not set in the West. That's set in. Uh, oh my God, I just forgot the actor's name. Um, Bruce Campbell. Dude, what? Well, yeah, that's set in Bruce Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> so that's different. <laughs> it's set in the Bruce Campbell verse. Uh, but uh, yeah. All right. So yeah. Once again, um, yeah. Make sure you uh, subscribe and tell all your friends. That would help grow this show a lot, which would be nice in the year 2024. But if not, either way. We're going to continue to discuss more obscure media uh, every day. And if you have any uh, requests. Every day? Uh, every, every week. Did I say every day? <laughs> oh, I thought you said every day. I'm like, has there been a, cha- a program? Well, I mean, we're both know. technically unemployed, so we could. <laughs> it wouldn't kill us to crap out some more. I've episodes. got a lot of free time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we are the look well of uh, podcasts and YouTube shows. Um and I do want to thank uh, Creative Cavey. It was his suggestion from forever ago to uh, watch Look Well. Yes. Uh, so thanks for your patience, and it was a great suggestion. I'm really glad we uh, we, we got to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like the, the only other – I know there's been a few suggestions over the years. I know that uh, Matt was the one who suggested we cover that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells. I don't even know if he listens. I never even see him on social media anymore. But uh, anyway, e- either way – if you have a suggestion, let us know, and we'll eventually get to it, is what I'm saying. Uh, so, uh, once again, uh, for everyone in the live chat, thank you. And if uh, you're not in the live chat, thanks anyway. And we will see you next Sunday as we continue to unearth more obscure media only on Obscurity Now. We'll see you next week. You've been enjoying Obscurity Now, a podcast that's recorded live to tape and streamed to Twitch and YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss an episode or hilarious quip. Take us with you by following the download links provided in the show notes to wherever you get podcasts. And take notice of our various social media links. If that's what you're into, I'm not here to judge. And make sure you join us live next week at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific as we continue to discuss more obscure media only on Obscurity Obscurity Now. Now.